And finally, New Rule Americans need to rewatch Ken Burns' great documentary on prohibition because people are starting to notice America has a drinking problem. <laughs> now, I can't believe that we would be ever so stupid as to outlaw booze again, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't take notice when the nation goes through one of its periodic binge drinking phases like we are in now. Since the turn of the millennium, Alcohol consumption in this country has risen steadily and alcohol-related deaths have doubled. Even millennials, who used to be the more sober generation, are now dying of cirrhosis of the liver at record rates. And that was before COVID hit, when lockdown nation really hit the bottle. The pandemic was an excuse for people to drink more, drink in the day, and drink alone, a condition psychologists call Melania. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> we lost all sense of time and the rules went out the window. Restaurants were delivering cocktails with hard liquor. I know this because they were delivering them to my house. <laughs> because as long as I had liquor, I didn't care there was no toilet paper. <laughs> but just as a historical trend, this can't be good. There is a word for when everyone in society gets drunk just to get through the day. And that word is Russia. <laughs> and I do mean through the day, because even before COVID, we started putting liquor everywhere. Every month, you could see some viral video of an all-out brawl at Chuck E. Cheese, because even this children's restaurant serves beer now. United, Southwest, and American Airlines have all either cut back or stopped serving alcohol because there have been so many recent incidents where the passengers act like Mel Gibson at a traffic stop. <laughs> the flight crew has to treat us like children now. I will turn this plane around and no one will go to Dallas-Fort Worth. <laughs> <laughs> Grocery stores now serve beer on tap. <laughs> For the first time ever, husbands are asking, honey, you need me to pick up anything at the market? I'm... <laughs> <clears throat> Supermarkets also invite customers to shop and sip from their open wine bars. <laughs> Belly up, mom. Leave your troubles in the produce department. <laughs> and your baby in the car. <laughs> You'll get over it. But hey, <laughs> if you get drunk at Whole Foods, please remember, vomit in a reusable bag. <laughs> Movie theaters now also serve beer and wine and sometimes hard liquor. So does Taco Bell and Disneyland and Starbucks. You thought they had trouble spelling your name on the cup before. And of course, what's the point of living large if you can't get offered a drink when you shop and get your hair done? Book clubs have long been just an excuse to guzzle wine the way fishing is really just drinking on a boat and <laughs> hunting is drinking in the woods and bowling is drinking with rented shoes on, you know? <laughs> Aquariums serve alcohol now. And zoos. Zoos? Who gets shit-faced at the zoo? <laughs> when did people start saying, you know, if I'm gonna stare at a polar bear taking a nap, I'm gonna need a couple of stiff ones. I... <laughs> alcohol is everywhere on TV now. Hosts of the Today Show have it on their desk. I've seen guests on Watch What Happens Live have it in their hands. And of course, stars of The Real Housewives have it on their faces. <laughs> <clears throat> now, maybe you recognize yourself in some of this. Ask your... <laughs> <laughs> Ask yourself, do I drink in the morning? Do I drink alone? Do I receive mystery packages from Amazon that make me ask, when did I order snowshoes? <laughs> This is all eerily familiar. In the Prohibition documentary, the first episode is called A Nation of Drunkards. And it describes how on farms in the 19th century, there was a barrel 
of hard cider by the door, which you dipped into every time you came and went. Ken Burns writes, Americans routinely drank at every meal, including breakfast. In many towns, a bell rang twice a day to signal what was called grog time, <laughs> so that men could stop whatever they were doing in factories and offices, mills and farm fields, and drink. Well, here in the now times, we seem to be heading back in that direction. And I think the reason is this. The COVID epidemic may be subsiding, but the epidemic that preceded it, the anxiety epidemic, is not. And usually when people drink, it's to alleviate some form of anxiety. As we re-enter society, half of Americans say COVID has been so stressful, they worry they'll never fully recover. We're using liquor as a crutch for our pandemic exacerbated problem of being socially impaired. We call it social media, but really it's the opposite of social. And our increasing detachment from one another in real life and dependence on screens and online relationships makes us ever more vulnerable to the lure of liquid courage when it comes to really interacting with people. But drinking, my friends, is not the answer. Okay, it's part of the answer. I'm not gonna lie, it's part of the answer. <clears throat> yes, take, <laughs> taking, the, taking the edge off a bit, yes, I myself have a long history of using liquor to take the edge off. Usually off some other drug, but still. <clears throat> but not at two in the afternoon, <clears throat> not at the Piggly Wiggly, and definitely not at the zoo. We have got to get a handle on our anxiety, and it can't be through the bottle. Everybody needs to just get a grip. Now, if you'll excuse me, my, my vacation just started, and there's a cool one waiting for me in the dressing room. Uh -huh.